I'm Ellen and this is Stitch Lewis, your place to watch, learn, and make. Um, so before we get started, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notif for notifications when new videos are launched, um, do new tutorials every Tuesday, and my vlog on Fridays behind the, behind the skeins. Today uh, I want to talk about garter stitch versus stockinette stitch, what the differences between these two fabrics are, what the heck they mean, um, and then how to make them. Um, Okay, so let's get into it. What is the difference between garter stitch and stockinette stitch? I mean, you can, sure you can already just by eye kind of see that there's a different texture going on here, um, but there's some other characteristics that um, I think of between these two and when deciding which stitch I want to do for what. And just getting to learn all that different like knitting jargon and what is the result of it. So I'm going to get started by talking about garter stitch. Garter stitch is, um, you'll see it kind of has these ridges and it is reversible. So it's going to look the same on each side. And this is also just like, if you're just learning to knit, this is typically what your first project is going to look like where it's all knit stitches and so you, all you have to do is learn to cast on, knit the uh, right side row, knit the wrong side row, and you just keep going as far as you want and then bind off. Three little skills and you can um, get going with something like this. So you could make yourself a scarf, you can make yourself a headband, anything like that just with garter stitch. Also note that I said wrong side row and right side row and not row one and row two, and I'll explain why I'm pointing that out afterwards here. Stockinette stitch, um, if we look at it here, um, you can see you can see more of the um, the knit stitches. So the knit stitch is it looks like a little V. And I'll kind of point that out so you'll just see those those V's. So it's rows or columns of those knit stitches. And then if I flip it over, it almost looks like the garter stitch, um, but you can see that this is kind of tighter together, and that's because it's every row is um, the same on this side. What I I think stockinette stitch does a really good job of demonstrating that when you do a a knit stitch on the back side, the result is a purl stitch. So if you start thinking about the architecture of knitting that way. Um, if I knit on this side, it's going to look like a purl on the opposite side, and that'll start to help you wrap your round your your head around it. Uh, my favorite way to describe what a knit stitch looks like is it looks like a um, scarf. You know, like picture, you know, like if this is, you know, uh, somebody's head, then it looks like it's wearing a scarf. So if your knitting needle is on there it looks like your needle is wearing a scarf or that the, your new stitch is wearing a scarf underneath. Whereas you would call your pearl stitch a cowl. So keeping with those knitting um, friendly terms to start thinking about those two things as you advance and learn new stitches, it really helps you uh, going forward. If you have to fix mistakes or if you're trying to remember what part of a pattern you're on, that's really helpful. Other differences, um, garter stitch is a little squishier um, because it you almost have to do more rows to get the same length because it, it um, kind of like shrinks up a little bit lengthwise. So you get a little more like squishiness to it, especially if you were to do like a bulky yarn um, versus a really skinny yarn. But um, fingering weight yarn is beautiful, I think, in garter stitch as well. Um, stockinette stitch is a little a little flatter, but you can see how it curls. <laughs> Uh, if you're not blocking it and even if you do block it afterwards it's eventually going to start curling up again so um, that's why sweaters will have ribbed you know knit one purl one ribbed cuffs um, or garter stitch it on the edges like on the sides or you know like first couple rows if I knit if I knit like four rows to start so two wrong sides two right sides um, that would help flatten that out. So I could do a combination of these two to, to get rid of that curling. 
Back and etched stitch is typically what's used for color work or fair isle um, because you can really see those patterns really like clean um, for your designs. And it's gonna be a little bit drapier, um, so meaning like it'll just lay nicer on your body as like a shawl or a sweater. Um, and garter stitch is um, gonna, you know, be a little stiffer. If you're doing it in finger weight, fingering weight, it's still gonna be drapey, but if you get um, kind of chunkier, it's gonna stand up a little bit more. Really, garter stitch, you can use it for anything. Um, it's really popular in shawls. Um, some sweaters, I like it in a sweater. The so stripes look really cool in garter stitch. I'm gonna show you this example here real quick. So this is garter stitch in an alternating stripe. So it's this blue knit on the right side and then back on the wrong side and then switching to um, the white, right side, wrong side. So that's what gets that um, solid stripe. If we just did a single row of a time, um, you wouldn't get those defined stripes and you can kind of see even on the back how it's, it's a little less defined on the, on the wrong side because the ridge or these bumps are half white, half blue, where on the right side, it's white and blue for each ridge for the full thing. Let's get into why I said, think of it as right side and wrong side. The opposite of a knit is a purl. So when I'm, when I'm doing a knit stitch, what that looks like from behind, if I was like holding up in a mirror, it would look, it would be a purl stitch. And um, so in thinking of that, knitting flat, if I wanna do garter stitch, because I'm, I would be knitting across and then I would flip over and I would be knitting across on the wrong side row. But if I were doing this in the round, I would be knitting and once I got to the beginning, then I would have to switch to a purl. So garter stitch in the round is knit one row, purl one row, and that's what gets these ridges. For stockinette stitch, you're knitting on the right side row, and then you're purling across the wrong side row. That's for flat. If we're doing it in the round, you know, we're, we're just knit stitches all the way around. So you just knit, you knit the right side. And so once you get around and you get to the beginning again, you just keep knitting. So um, depending on your love of pearls, if you're um, new or if it's just awkward, or if you just don't like pearls, or maybe you like pearls more, um, you might have a favorite for flat versus round. So knitting um, flat, me being a continental knitter, um, if I'm doing garter stitch flat, I can just kind of like zone out and go on autopilot and just knit stitches across, um, you know, back and forth. And it's the same experience doing stockinette stitch in the round. So for a sweater, for a sock, um, any of those projects, stockinette stitch gives me that all knit stitch experience and that different look. Lots of different benefits for each one. You know, you get that different look, you know, you'll have your favorites for each project. Um, but just kind of learning these terms and the, you know, the architecture behind those stitches gets you kind of well on your way to understanding what the heck we're all talking about with these different stitches. So I hope this helped. Um, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get um, notifications every time that we release a new video. Comment below if you learned something new or if you have something to add, and we will see you next time.